five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is The Ramble, and I am Alex Bennett, your humble and obedient host. And we will be here until uh, uh, ten, uh, midnight tonight, I guess, if, if I last that long. Uh, it's all tech. Uh, I'll explain it all later. I'm, I'm not 100%. I'm like about... 45 percent okay anyway we got a guest tonight to start off the show with and we always love to go talk to him out to california we go ladies and gentlemen hey waving at us that's will durst hello will hey. how you doing alex bennett yeah what's up uh it's a beautifully gray day and uh that's about it i got a gig tomorrow mm-hmm I'm in uh, San Rafael, and then Friday I'm in Carmel, yeah. and then Saturday Santa Cruz. Now you and see, then- let me let me say something about him. The first thing that he said to me when we first started talking, which was uh, before we went on the air, obviously, uh, he pointed to that calendar in back of him and said there are some empty spaces there. Yeah. You you don't like to wake up in the morning to empty spaces, no, do you? San no, I'm trying to fill it up, actually. Yeah. yeah. And and so your mission every morning when you wake up is ba- uh, to put another space in on that calendar. Yeah. <laughs> at, least, at least two a week. Yeah. Is my theory. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's uh, that's uh, that's. Uh, well, otherwise, I would stay in bed all day eating marzipan, reading mystery novels, which yeah. is a bad way to live. But then I would run out of money really quick because I live in San Francisco. I could do this in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Yeah. I could probably, you know, with the Social Security, I could probably I could sell my house in San Francisco and buy a small subdivision in Sheboygan. But. <laughs> I want to live here. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's that's good. So anyway, he, as I say, he wakes up in the morning with the idea of, uh, hey, I, I've got to, I've got to work. I've got to make sure those those little empty spaces are filled. Yeah, filling the spaces. Yes, yes. What about you? Well, I got a space. What's going on? Uh, I got a tooth pulled. Yeah. Yeah. Long time coming. Uh, I've been fighting to keep this tooth forever. It was like an old pal. You know, just me and him against the world. Yeah, you and the 32, yeah. Yeah, and so um, it's all the way back here. You can't see it. I mean, if I showed it to you, you know, I guess you'd see it. uh, No, no, no. no. If I can't see it when you smile, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, he can't see it. Uh, And I'm going to get a little space. Was an arduous process? No, actually, you know what's strange about it is, is that it was, uh, he did it, of course, and I opted for the gas. Do you know, you remember the days when you went to the dentist and you got gas and it was just, would you like some gas? Right? And he said, sure, and they gave you the gas, right? I had one doctor that was like a hippie doctor, and he went, you want to get high? (laughs) You know? Oh, really? Yeah. And it was always, it would never, I I never saw it it as Costing him any real amount of money, okay? Um, hold on a second. I think I'm over-modulating here just a tad, okay? All right. Uh, and and uh, so, I, you know, I just, uh, I, 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 it was always free. You know how much? It's 165 bucks now if you want gas. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you... Yeah, so much stuff is being pushed onto us. You know, it used to be all part of the process, no. and now... You pay for everything. Used to be, if you were a loyal customer of a hotel chain, you would get bumped up for free. No, now every little increment uh, has a charge. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, on an airplane, you want a pillow? That's ten dollars. You know, yeah. you want a blanket? That's another ten dollars. Uh, uh, but I mean, everything. Um, One hundred sixty-five bucks for gas, and I said, my God, it's just fucking air. It's it's uh, you know. 
Well, it takes a special person to administer it. I said, God, I had a guy that used to go to parties with a bottle of nitrous oxide, this big blue bottle, and get everybody high. He was named, name was Tom Fursad, and he uh, started High Times Magazine. And he used to go to these parties and say, here, you know, you, and everybody would get high on nitrous oxide. I tried nitrous oxide once. I did not care for it. Well, you know what I might do the next time I go to a dentist and I want nitrous oxide? I'm just going to bring about five cans of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of aer aerosol uh, whipped cream. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because that is powered by... Uh, nitrous oxide and and you just you know you just take the stuff in and uh you kind of like you do it so that you don't get the cream but you get the air you know you just kind of finesse it and it, it'll get you high go on folks go out and buy some uh ready whip two fetishes is uh su supplied at once because yeah. you, the whipped cream people over here yeah. and the nitrous people over here exactly so you know what the hell. So anyway, so that 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 was my uh, 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 big adventure. Did you get the gas? And, and, and yeah, I got the gas. And then he went and he, you know, he pulled it. And I mean, you know, these guys know exactly what they're doing, and they do it in the least po possible traumatic way. And you know, I heard something once, and I think it may be true. And what I heard was that it takes less novocaine to pull a tooth than to fill it. Hmm. You know, the, you think of pulling a tooth as being just this wrenching thing, right? And to begin with, they don't pull it. They actually pry it out. It's like, you know, like you're taking a, a nail out of a out of yeah, a, uh, a two-by-four. Two um, but uh, he did it. took him five minutes. And, I mean, he's like, I think he's teeth pulling is us, you know, are us. Uh, he, he, he had like ten office little little places where people go and he was going from one to the other pulling teeth dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. and I'm thinking to myself I would kill myself if that was the only thing I had to look forward to every day was pulling another tooth my dentist took over from my previous dentist yeah and he's a, a new guy and uh, you could tell the difference in uh, philosophy and what they were taught at schools. The new guy doesn't uh, fill anymore. There's no fillings. Everything is a crown. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. All yeah. right. No. So, uh, so he just immediately goes to root canal. Is that what he does, or he puts a crown over the tooth? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, More you know why? He, you know why he does that? More expensive. More expensive. Sure. Sure, they want me. They go, you would you like to get an in? You know, would you like to get a uh, uh, what do you call it? Implant. And I'm thinking, let's see, I'm 79 years old. Yeah, I could live to be 100, and that implant would probably serve me well. Or I could live another year, and it wouldn't serve me at all. I would have just wasted the money going to the grave. So I've decided for the time being to just get what they call these clip-ons that really that you put in. And it's uh, they're they're made to your mouth, and they, you know you just and I I did that. I, you always have to do that when you do implants because you have to keep the teeth spaced. All right, so oh, I, uh, I I yeah I I did that, and I was um, uh, last time, and when it came time to do the Im actual implant, I went, God, I'm really enjoying this. This is fine. All I do is I pop it in every day and I hardly notice it's there and if it, if I do notice it's there it's something to play with with my tongue you know so uh, uh, I'm getting one of those and if I do want an implant you know at any point I've kept the teeth spaced and they can go ahead and just drop the implant in there but you know that is so fucking expensive I mean y y you think well they say the implant will cost you $2,300 oh that's good Oh, but then you got to get the crown for it. That's another eighteen hundred. Oh, and then you got to get the. Uh, we have to do a, uh, a a CT scan on your mouth to make sure that we don't hit the sinuses when we go in putting the implant in. So that's another three hundred. And then you got to get the spacer to take care of you, and that's another eight hundred and seventy-five. By the time you're through, you spend six thousand dollars on a tooth. On a tooth. 
Uh, and if I can just use the spacer, and it'll let's say it lasts me a couple of years before I have to get another one, right? Fine. You know, if I have to spend 875 bucks every couple of years, it's fine with me. Rather than, than it, I can have, uh, by, by the time I've bought five or six of these things over the years, and I'll be dead by then, uh, you know, what the hell? I've, I've saved the money on the implant. I had bad experiences with dentists when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Bad. So I did not go to the dentist until I was like 20. I skipped like 16 through 20. And then I went to the Marquette Dental School. Yeah. Because it was cheap. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was cheap. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, and, and it, but it, it, we, it, were you afraid of dentists? Yes, yes. Yeah. He was, he was, uh, uh, he loved my mother. He loved my mother. And then uh, as soon as the door closed, he hated me for some reason. <laughs> I, I don't know what the deal was, but uh, he wouldn't use and it always and yeah and uh, you know when they call you Tiger and Sport and Ace and stuff and yeah yeah I hate yeah. that they hate that uh, so anyway so uh, uh, I am um, uh, uh, so how much uh, of your day did that take up yesterday? Well, it was day, be day before yesterday. I I, can't, I I changed the date for this interview just because I wanted to make I didn't know on Monday how I would be feeling on Tuesday, right? Yeah. But I got to tell you, uh, I've had no pain. I've hardly had to take, I took an ibuprofen. Actually, I took a Vicodin I had lying around just to be on the safe side in the beginning. But I haven't had to take an ibuprofen since. Uh, and uh, I just washed my mouth out with salt, and it's fine. And the bleeding stopped in about two or three hours. And it, it was the most... Post-operative, the most painless situation I've ever been through. And operative, it does, you don't feel a damn thing. Plus, he did something with the Novocaine where, you know, my whole mouth wasn't numb. He just numbed the area. And, um, man, he went to town. He did it, and it was done, and, you know. Upper right? Upper right, right back here, the second tooth in from the back. That's always the one people seem to lose a lot. Uh, my father lost one there. Uh, my business manager lost one there. Uh, it always seems that that tooth is, you know, maybe on either side, you know. Oh, well, you know, whatever. So uh, as long as it isn't in the front and I don't look like a voter for Trump, you know. So, I mean. Um, a Trump voter. A Trump voter. Hey, listen, uh, um, um, we're going to get a Mueller report. Mueller 2. Mueller 2. <laughs> this time it's personal. This time it's personal. Yeah. This time I I I think there's going to be. I don't think the Democrats are going to be happy with it at all. You know. They're always going to say what What did you cut out? Yeah. And by, what's by, what's by, underneath that black mark there? By the way, no more black marks. Did you see that? No. Oh yeah. Uh, Bar is color coding the redactions. So is a certain color of of, of redaction. For like you know, some you know personal per people grand you know things like that. Is, grand is jury that. is another color, uh, oh, you know. Yeah. So so you'll have this rainbow. It'll be wonderful to look at, you know. Because so it's bad optics. You know you can't know this. You can't know this. You yeah know. yeah. Nobody likes to look at a redacted page anyway because just <laughs> you know. Yeah. Couldn't some kind of really scientific person? I guess they couldn't because these are all printed up. But some kind of real scientific person find out what's under the redaction. You would think by now. Yeah, but I don't think that they take ink and do it. It's part of the printing process. Yeah. So, I, I, so especially it, now with the computers, you go from A all the way through uh, B, and then uh, make it black. But then you print it up, and so whatever's under it is not going to show. No. Well, yeah. I don't think there's anything under it. I just think it's black now. Oh, really? And that's it. I think it used to be. It used to be you would get a sharpie and and go through it, and then people would go, you know, and try to find out and do the Sherlock Holmes thing where you you heat the paper and stuff. Yeah. Well, you know what you have to also do. You have to sit around and figure out uh, 
when he redacted it, if he indeed did a nice job of redacting, you know, whether he did an honest job of redacting. Oh, he did not. And he's not going to, no. I mean, no. he's the biggest fucking liar in the world. I mean, why? I mean, he went before Congress and why they didn't see that coming. You know, uh, I he lied. He said, "I'll show whatever uh, the public uh, deserves to see." In, in my determination, I will. I will try to. Well, make he's sure not. He wasn't people. lying. This is his determination. Yeah, yeah, but he was lying in saying that he was his first. His first uh, loyalty would be to the public. That's not true. His first loyalty is to Trump. But you see, the only thing that Mueller did, right? That was uh, that was. Uh, uh, the, the kind of left it open was he didn't make a determination on obstruction of justice. He said, I have the information, but I'm not going to make a determination on what should be done with that information. I will leave that up to the Attorney General. Okay? And so the Attorney General just looked at it and said, no obstruction. You know, because his belief is the President can't be guilty of obstruction and things like that. He right. He said he that. Also, he also, uh, uh, well, Kavanaugh wrote, Kavanaugh yeah. wrote that the president, uh, and this was before he was a Supreme Court justice, this was part of his uh, arguments, probably why he got nominated, but Kavanaugh wrote that the president is too busy with uh, affairs of state to uh, have to be bothered with any, any sort of uh, uh, law thing. So yeah. he's, and I'm sure Trump, you know, texted his agreement from the Sixth Fairway of one of his Scottish golf courses. But uh, yeah, so that's why Kavanaugh. So you know, no matter how far this goes up, if the Democrats yeah. take it to the Supreme Court, he's he's got an ace in the hole in the Supreme Court. Well, speaking of an uninformed president, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral <laughs> burnt to the ground. Or didn't burn to the ground, but it, it certainly was sufficiently damaged that we're not going there for a vacation anytime soon to go see Notre Dame Cathedral, right? Uh, although you might want to go to see the burned out hulk of, of Notre Dame. Okay, okay, okay. Enough apologizing. We all saw it. Well, we be, were all to, friends fixed. Okay, to begin with, the thing uh, people should know the thing's been rebuilt twice, okay? I think it burned down to the, the ground once before. Uh, uh, and maybe it was sacked by Mongols or something, but it, about twice before, and that spire that they made a big deal out of, that's only uh, like a couple, about 150 years old. Oh. Yeah, that was just a recent uh, a addition they put to the uh, to the church. Yeah, they put a giant spring up there so that but, it could bend. But if you think about the church itself, I mean, it, it went through the French Revolution and a whole bunch of other things as well. So, I mean, it, it, it's been standing there for a long time, you know. Couple, couple world wars, uh, yeah. close to the epicenter. Yeah, yeah, and so anyway, so uh, uh, it it uh, it burns down, and it was I was saddened by it because I always, whenever I was in Paris, I didn't know if you've been to Paris, but anytime you go to Paris, that's one of the things you have to see, you know. Rose and and, and, it, and it is absolutely magnificent. I mean, I went the first time I ever. Uh, went into Notre Dame Cathedral was on a Sunday, and they were holding a mass, and the music just filled this place, you know, and it was just ethereal. I mean, it was enough to make me, as a Jew, want to become Catholic. You know, it was just it was a great show. It's all the same thing. Don't well, worry. you know, those churches were built like that as a come on to poor people. Yeah. So they could come once a week to this the magnificent. Of they could go to a nice house it once a week. It, it was their castle for at least uh, a couple of hours while they prayed. So it was it was a come on, and, and that's why they always built these cathedrals. But anyway, our president, who is always willing to show how intelligent, or as I like to put it, intelligent he is, um, um, decided to oh. say, you know, really the way they could solve this problem is they should get those water things and just drop them on on uh, Notre Dame. Now, if he'd been watching the news, he would have learned they couldn't do that because of the age of the structure, and that if they dropped water on it, the thing would basically just fall apart. Disintegrate, yeah. Disintegrate. But he didn't know that. 
old, and he's acting like I've got the answer. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. must be such a burden to know everything. Yeah, it is. It is. It's terrible to be as uh, intelligent as he is. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, that was so stupid. Come on. It was. It was uh, an unforced error, as they say, in tennis. Yes, it was. Uh, he he just uh, for some reason he feels like he has to chime in on everything because he knows everything, and he's trying to help people out. He's. He's a giver. You know what's interesting, too, is that he cared more about the burning of Notre Dame Cathedral than he did about Puerto Rico. Think about it. Well, Puerto Rico uh, is suing him because of one of his golf courses. So <laughs> there are some people who think that that had something to do with his uh, response to Puerto Rico. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What a, what, a, what a great president. He's the president of everybody, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, we're so proud. Whenever he goes to another country and 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 uh, the, the gibberish, you know, dribbles out of his face-forward gash, we're always so proud. <laughs> oh, boy. So, I mean, the state of the country. And then now we've got, here. here's what we, okay, let me ask you this question. Here are all these candidates. Now, to begin with, I'm... You know, come on, the election isn't, it's, it's over a year and a half away, okay? Well, it, uh, why are we in the middle of all this, uh, I, I'm going to be run for president, and I'm going to run for president, and, you know, they, they're doing their whole, what? What is that all about? I don't understand it. Well, right now, uh, the Democrats have a white man problem in that uh, uh, a lot of their... Uh, uh, you know, they say uh, one thing, they can't attract white votes, uh, white males. They get a white male problem. They can't get white men. Hillary only got 34% of white men. And uh, they're finding it, as I say in my little column, because I wrote a column about this, they're finding, finding it harder to attract white men than vegan hot dog vendors have, have of selling their meatless sticks at a Wyoming rodeo. <laughs> so... They got that white man problem. And then they got people in the party who are not being shy, saying that they want their nominee to be anything but a white man. Okay, so they got that going on. Hmm. And the next one is the guys leading all the polls, Bernie and Joe, have 53% of the polls right now. Bernie's not a Democrat, and Joe's not running. So, <laughs> And then the next two are Beto, and and uh, Pete Beauty Gig, the Beauty uh, Gig, <laughs> and they got the four of them. The top four have seventy percent of the polls for white men, and yeah. it's driving the rest of the party apoplectic. Okay, but here's my question to you: Who do you think? I mean, I hate to ask it at this point. It's still too early. No but, idea. But who is? Nobody you, even knew. Do you have a favorite? Uh, I would say Biden Harris. I would go out and buy the bidenharris.org uh, URL mm -hmm. as a as a hedge bet. That's what I would do, right? Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, you know, I hate to say this, but uh, 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 Mayor Mayor um, Be Beauty Gig Beauty Gig appeals to me. He, he really is smart, decent, and I think he's the Trump killer. Because what can Trump say about this guy? Outside of the fact that he's gay, but he can't go for that because that's too obvious. You know, what's it going to go? Oh, that fag? He, oh, he probably will. You know, yeah. um, he, it, it's very difficult for him to come up against him. He can't go, he, the guy, two tours in Afghanistan is a very religious, I think Episcopalian or something like that. Uh, he, uh, the only thing that would even taint him in the eyes of, of, of the, the general populace would be that he's gay. And there's so many other things. Rhodes Scholar. 
you know, I mean, there's really very little that Trump can fight this guy on. He's got all the he's got the stuff, you know, and he's young and he's pretty. And uh, um, uh, the Democratic Party, you know, the old line. Yeah, the old line is the Republicans fall in line and Democrats fall in love. And yeah. that's what happened with uh, 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 Barack Obama. It's what happened with Bill Clinton. They're two popular candidates, and they're falling in love with beauty gig. Yeah. But it's so early. There's also uh, Joaquin Castro, who's so uh, elegant and eloquent, and uh, and then there's yeah. Biden. You know. Yeah, but the but, question is, who is Trump proof? And I think. Beauty gig. I love the way. How is that name pronounced? Uh, I think it's uh, Buttigieg. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete. That's what they're saying. That they got Pete up there. They don't want you to even have to deal with that last name. And it's not because it's too Jewish or it's too this or it's too that. <laughs> it's just too unpronounceable, you know. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I just think that, you know, this guy has real class. And I think he's the perfect, he's, he's the stealth candidate. Uh, I like the way Bernie went in front of Fox the other day. And, yeah, yeah. And, and proved and that, to him. misrepresented what he said. <laughs> no, but Fox was very fair with him. They were very Not fair. Huh? Not afterwards, when they reported. When they, uh, when they reported it afterwards. He was on camera. They yeah. were very yeah. Fair and with and the that, the that conservative audience that. applauded him when he talked about health care for all. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I you know, I I, I I I'm not a big Bernie fan because I think there's an age problem there, and I think uh, he he I I like the fact he's a socialist, but you don't win well, as a socialist. You he'll know. be 79. On Election Day 2020. Well, I'm 79, and I am totally incapable of doing anything that would run anything. Uh, you could. You don't have the energy to run the country? I don't have the energy to run this fucking program, okay? <laughs> Leader of the free it's world? Every, it's everything I can do to, you know, stay awake during my show every night, you know? <laughs> it's past my bedtime. And Biden is 77. And Biden is 77. So there, There's your old white man problem. So Mayor Pete is, I think... What's he, 44? I think something like that. But And he's proud to show who his, his, his husband is, <laughs> you know? And uh, uh, it, it's just, he's so out there and so open that I think America might embrace this guy. Isn't South Bend the home to Notre Dame University? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't even know where South Bend is. I couldn't. I couldn't uh, point it on a map. I think it's a suburb of Chicago. Yeah, uh, but uh, who cares if he's a mayor? By, be, by being a mayor, he still has more experience than Trump. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, what are you going to do? The, the guy, and he he really had in many ways more experience than Obama had when he took over the office. You know, of its of administration. Yeah. His secret power is the media loves him. Yes. And so they would cover him the same way they covered Trump in yeah. 2016. Yeah. Every rally, everything that he said, everything that he tweeted, they love, and it would drive Trump it, nuts. It would be the oaf versus uh, versus uh, Prince Charming. <laughs> really, it would be that, you know? I love, I love your phrase, the Trump killer. The Trump killer, yeah. 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 Do you watch Game of Thrones? By the way, to, to kind of finish this thing off, because we're running over um, what we normally run, uh, but uh, uh, did you see Game of Thrones? Yes, I did. And what did you think? Um, the, the, it, it seems like uh, the credit sequence, the opening credit sequence. It's different. Is different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it was okay. You know, I mean, it, it set it's the table. Set up. It set the it's table. Set up. Everybody shows up, and oh, look at now we're gonna have plans and blah blah. And, and, and supposedly, all the other episodes average an hour and fifteen minutes. So no, the first two are about. <laughs> this is great that we know this much trivia, but the first two, one was fifty-five, one is fifty-eight, and then they bump into seventy and eighty. Yeah, and, pro five. and probably yeah. the last one will be a couple hours. 
Yeah, they're yeah. little movies. They're, they're little, little movies. movies. Oh, yeah. And they're marvelous movies, and, I mean, and, and we've enjoyed them. Except I heard somebody, the, uh, this was very funny. Somebody said, that show was pretty good the other night, except for the very corny Dragon Date. The dra- oh, oh. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They called it. How many people... <laughs> How many people who had been in comedy uh, said, uh, what does a dragon eat? And, and how many comics said, anything he wants, before she did? <laughs> <laughs> they like to cook it first. <laughs> it's nice to know they don't eat raw meat. Hey, always good talking to you. Great to see you, you know, Alex. Let's... You look wonderful. Give your lovely frau a big fat wet sloppy kiss. Right? I will, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. See you in a bit, ladies and gentlemen. That is Will Durst. We bit. Five years and still talking. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. All righty, uh, well, welcome back. Wait a minute, I got to get this thing to. <laughs> Sometimes it just it just doesn't work right. Nothing works right. Uh, you know, I've been I've, I've been going through all kinds of little problems. So let me turn on my light back there so you can it, it says on the air. Um, uh, I just you know I've been putting out one one fire after another, and all of a sudden I, I see now that I, I have a button I push here that would make uh, make this thing um, uh, transition, and it uh, doesn't seem to train. Oh wait a minute, let me see here. Does it? No, it doesn't. See doesn't transition any longer. If I hit this, it doesn't transition any longer. That's interesting. That's wonderful. I love that. It just, uh, it's my life is just, it's hell. Uh, you know, it's one little problem after another. I mean, I can do this by hand, so what the hell, I'll do it by hand. Anyway, uh, we, uh, we have, uh, we're, I've, I've opened up the Skype lines. I don't know if anybody's going to call tonight, and I don't know if I can make it through a whole show. Uh, I have been uh, somewhat, I, I don't know if the term is ill. I don't know if I, that's the way I would, I would describe it, but I, I, would, I had an infection. Uh, and uh, uh, first of all, I wasn't on on Wednesday, or we had problems with the show on Wednesday, and so that didn't really go on. Then on, uh, oh, because my machine broke down and nothing else was working right, and it was just, it was a clusterfuck. Thursday, I was able to do a sample show, a test show off this machine, and it worked okay, all right? Because my original machine is in the, in, at Apple being fixed, and it's been there for oh, almost a week. It will be a week tomorrow, and I've yet to get it back, all right? So there's that. Uh, let me see here. So, uh, I, so I, I don't have my old machine, and so I'm having to work with uh, the, the newer machine, uh, not the newer machine, my oldest machine. Okay, I got a new machine. That one's broken. Got an old machine. I'm using that to make this work. And uh, nothing was working. And I kind of got to the point, you know, I kind of got to the point, let me turn my mic up a little bit. I kind of got to the point where I uh, I suddenly realized that an, everything was out to get me. Whoa! That's uh, J- Jeff Stein calling in. Let me How see. How are you doing? Yeah, hello, Jeff. Hold on a second. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, and Chris Wallace is also calling in. So let me put him on there. Uh, let me first uh, get, uh, let's see here, Stein Zeller. There we go. Okay. And uh, I need to get um, the uh, second thing. I need to get Charlie Wallace on here. So we double click on that and I make a little. Get a little work. What is all that noise that I hear? Yeah, well, just one more. Uh, no, that's not right. Hold on a second. Uh, I, I'm just, I, I'm getting too old for this. Okay, here we go. There we go. That should work, shouldn't it? Yeah, it sounds good. Wait, wait a minute. Charlie yep. Wallace should be there. We go. Now we got Charlie, and then we see both of these guys on at the same time. Okay, all nope. right. How's that? Anyway, are, are we in sync enough, folks? Yeah, we're in sync enough. Yeah. Okay. If my if my lips aren't exactly moving right, well, that's too bad. Uh, uh, you know, we've got a problem with uh, with uh, 
uh, uh, sinking because of too much of the stuff going being done at the same time. It's just a pain in the ass. So anyway, I hope it all looks good, folks. Uh, hello to both of you. How are you? Good. Uh, huh? Good. What were you saying? Wait a minute. Somebody was. Somebody's coming back there. Hold on a second. Let me get rid of. Let me get lower you guys a little bit because you're very loud. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I think we're okay. Uh, okay now. Yeah, I think we're fine. Um, yeah. So uh, I was out. Uh, I didn't do a show last night. What happened was is that uh, <clears throat> I didn't do a show Friday night, so I wasn't able to tell everybody that when I woke up on Friday morning, my tooth was killing me. Uh, I had uh, basically a, 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 it was really swollen on this side of my mouth, so I went to my dentist, and uh, she looked at it, and she said, that's terrible, uh, and uh, you're... you're uh, uh, You've got an infection, and she said if that infection gets bad enough, it could go to the sinus, and if it goes to the sinus, it could go to the brain and kill you. And I'm thinking, isn't this a little overkill for scaring me? You know, I mean. Uh, so I, uh, uh, she says you got to have it pulled. I said, well, can you guys pull it? She says, well, yeah, we charge about six fifty for it. So I, uh, I said, yeah, but she said, we, we can't do it. That thing's infected. you got to have an oral surgeon, and that'll probably cost you double what we charge. Oh, God. So yeah, she, she calls around, tries to get somebody who's going to pull it that day. She's got the can't waits on this tooth. Like, she's been wanting to get it for a long time, and now that she's got the shot, she wants to do it before I change my mind, okay? Mm -hmm. And this tooth has been this way for... 20 years, something like that, you know, uh, and it survived all of that. And, and so she gave me, she said, I can't find any dentist today because it's, uh, you know, it, the holidays are coming up and so on. She says, I'll uh, call, we'll call around and find you somebody, maybe do it Monday. But in the meantime, here's some amoxicillin. And she gave me a 10-day supply of amoxicillin to kill the infection. So I go home, and then she says, uh, here's the here's a doctor to call. So I call this guy, and he's an oral surgeon, and he's on Madison Avenue, uh, nice prestige address in a big building, and uh, I, you know, they said, okay, yeah, sure, we can we can we pull teeth. That's our job, uh, Doctor Pullum here, uh, and uh, I I I you know I say, okay, I'll make an appointment for Monday. So now, of course, all weekend, I'm worried about this. What, it's gonna, what, what is it going to be like? It's not that I haven't had a tooth pulled before, okay, because I have had a tooth pulled before. Uh, and, um, but, you know, every time you do it, it's so far from the last time, you can't remember how bad the last time or how easy the last time was. So um, uh, I just... Uh, um, uh, worried about it all weekend. Then I went to them at the, at the at the place, and and um, they uh, uh, I have to. Here's the thing about dentists, about anything, doctors, dentists, whatever. Every time you go into a new one, you gotta fill out, literally, a a a, 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 a pile of paper the size of the Mueller report. Okay. And, and uh, so I had to sit there. I'm sitting there writing this. And, you know, I can't write anymore. For some reason, I don't know, either because I've gotten older and my hands aren't right or I just haven't done enough writing in my last few years that I'm not used to writing anymore. So I'm just terrible at even doing cursive. Not cursive, but uh, or printing, just printing. And every time they want my name, it's Bennett G. Schwarzman. Come on, you, gotta, you know, I, there's no line long enough on any of these forms to fit that name in there. And I'm filling this thing out, and all of a sudden the nurse says, Mr. Schwarzman? And I go, I'm filling the forms out! And she went, oh, okay, we'll get back to you. And, and then it's, you know, then I can finish the first page. And then there's the second page. And then there's a third page with all the things that says, do you have asthma, do you have this, do you have that? And I'm checking them, and the woman says, oh, no, you got to initial them. So now I got to go back and initial all of them. This thing must. So why don't we have a thing I'm, uh, where I can go on someplace 
where you fill out a form answering all these questions online. And then anytime any doctor wants that information, all you have to sign when you get there is a permission thing. And that's it. But every time I go to a doctor, I have to fill it out all over again. And by the way, even that is repetitious because it's always saying, what's the date when you sign? What's <laughs> what, you know, and they keep at, what's your, uh, uh, it just it was just it was maddening. So finally, I figured you know they can pull the tooth. Nothing's going to be worse than this. So I said uh, so that I, I go, then go. They didn't take me in, and they put me in the room. And there's a picture of the X-ray that my doctor took of the tooth on a twenty on a thirty-five inch screen. Right? Yeah, you know, like I want to see my rotten tooth. You know, in 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 four K. Uh, and. Um, the woman says, so uh, I, are you going to have gas today? And I said, yeah. She says, okay, that's going to be $165. Now, I, I got to tell you, when I, years ago when I went to a dentist, the reason I got to like dentists was because they had the gas, all right? And then anytime I was going to go through some kind of procedure, they would gas me up. And I remember the first dentist that ever did it to me was a friend of mine, and he was kind of a hip guy who lived on the Lower East Side, and what he did was, he said, you want to get high? That's how he described it, okay? And I went, sure, go ahead. Puts the mask on me, I get high. I have always taken gas for everything, if, if the dentist will do it. My current dentist won't do it. She says it rots brain cells. I said, like, I give a fucking <laughs> shit at my age. Use all my brain cells up, just numb me out. So anyway, uh, and I said, $165 for the gas. Don't you know this is, I think, uh, 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 found in nature? I mean, you know, it's part <laughs> oxygen and it's part nitrous oxide. And actually, if I wanted to, I didn't even have to pay them $165. I could just go down to Costco, buy uh, like a case of, of, uh, of a Ready Whip, okay? And then use the Ready Whip, which is propelled by carbon monoxide, to get me high. All right? So anyway, 165 bucks for that. Well, now, as I'm sitting there waiting for the dentist, a woman comes in. She says, hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm the accountant. And now she says, here's what it's going to cost you. Yeah. And she, she checked it out, right, you know, with my dental plan and all of that and uh, she says, it's going to be 165 for the gas. I went, yeah, I know it's going to be 165 for the gas, but you're not pulling this thing without me being loaded, okay? And she, um, she uh, 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 tells me that uh, it, what it's going to cost. Now, what do you think it came to? Now, my doctor, my other doctor said she could do it for $650, but a, a dental a surgeon, a, 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 what do you call it? A dental surgeon, oral surgeon, oral surgeon uh, would cost me about double. Okay, so what do you think it cost me without the gas to pull the tooth? Thirteen hundred. Really? Try up to two thousand. Try yeah. try five hundred dollars. What? Less yes. Yes. My old dentist was going to rip me off. <laughs> and then they said one hundred and sixty-five for the gas. And then uh, your dental plan will pay 75% of, uh, of the pull and will pay for 50% uh, of the gas, okay? <clears throat> so I said, could you just give me the gas half the time? You know. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and so now he comes in and uh, he, he looks at the tooth and he goes, yeah, that's infected. He says, that tooth's really got to go. Uh, and... I, you know, I guess I can trust him, although he's the guy that is going to make money now off of me losing my tooth. Okay? So um, I just went, uh, okay, well, then I guess we have to pull it. So he comes in, and he, he puts some Novocaine in me. First, he put the mask on me, and I start getting really loaded and getting more and more, you know. And um, because if I'm paying 165 bucks for it, I, I'm going to use up all the carbon, uh, all the... Uh, uh, hydro, what is it? Uh, nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide that's known to man, okay? <laughs> and I said, just do it, you know. Uh, and he, then he came in, he gave me the Novocaine, which was, it wasn't that 
you know, it's never pleasant, but it wasn't terrible. And they did one on the back of the mouth, which did hurt kind of a little bit. And then he said, I'll be back in about 10 minutes once all this is, your mouth's getting numb. And uh, then he came back in, and uh, he said, can you feel that? And I said, yes, yeah. so he gave me a little bit more Novocaine. And uh, he pulled the tooth. It's the one back here. I'm not going to show it to you, and you can't see it. All I know is that Bo Boris Karloff, this is a little piece of trivia for you folks out there. <laughs> oh Boris Karloff was missing a tooth right here. Okay? Uh, and he used to wear a denture or a fake tooth, or now as they call mm -hmm. them, clip-ons. Okay? So that, you know, he looked fine. If you took it out, his, his mouth kind of caved in a little bit right here. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when they did the monster, he pulled the crown, or the, pulled the, the fake tooth, yeah. so that his cheek would go in. And he, you remember, if you look at him right here, there is yeah. a dent in the monster's mouth. And that's the reason why. So now I can play the monster. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you, you can't really see it. It's all the way in the back. And I'm going to, uh, so then I called my, my other doctor and I said, I want to get the clip on, you know, the one you put in there. And it, I, I've used them before when I've had teeth pulled and then they did an implant and they like to put them in there to keep the spacing going and uh so i i said to her i'll get that done she says well you're coming back about a week after you have it pulled and we'll hmm. you know so i said uh, okay and so then I, I i called up i think it was yesterday and i said i want to make an appointment to have the thing you know have you make a, a clip on and that's what they call them they call them a clip on believe it or not they call them what it cost. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I said, okay, um, uh, do, the, do, the, do the clip on and uh, we'll, uh, you know, uh, let me see here. Uh, she said, uh, when can you do it? And I said, next week. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm getting, um, there's Patrick. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. I got to get Patrick on here. Yes, because he's just been added to the, there he is filling out the third portion on our page so we don't look too like like my mouth. Um, uh, anyway, so what happened was um, um, the, the person at my dentist's office said to me, um, yeah, that'll be $875. I figure I'll choke, you know, because about half of that will be taken care of by my insurance. I get a check back from them. And then I, I thought about it and I was telling somebody, you know, I wonder if my dentist is ripping me off again. He said, well, why don't you ask around? Mm -hmm. So Marjorie stopped seeing this dentist, has been seeing a dentist in her building. So I was over there today, and I said, call up, find out how much it's going to cost me to have them do one of these clip-ons. And they're in a big, expensive building, okay? And uh, the woman calls, and she says, well, I'll get back to you. So we're on the bus going home, and she calls, and she tells Marjorie, and Marjorie says, oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. How much do you think she's going to charge me for the clip-on? Uh, uh, 300. Uh, well, uh, try 500. But, well, it, this, but it certainly isn't as bad, okay, yeah. as, the, uh, uh, as, the, uh, uh, as what we were going to be charged by... Uh, uh, by doctor overpricing me, uh, and I just, I just really, you know, I was so, uh, I was so mad about this whole thing that she had the nerve to charge me that much. Why am I not getting a picture of uh, Tony here? Hold on a second. I should be getting Tony in here, and I'm not getting Tony in here. Uh, no, that's Scott Boddicker I hit. Okay, let me see here. Tony, there we go. Tony. Okay, now is Tony going to come up? There you go. We got Tony now. So there's Tony. All right. Hello, Tony. How are you? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I have 500 bucks. Wow. Not 75, 500 bucks. And with my insurance, tools? that'll be about 250. Yeah, dentists make a lot and of money. All of them said because I had insurance, the price was cheaper. The price on my tooth yeah. being pulled was cheaper because I had insurance, not because of the money I was going to get back from the insurance, but just because I had the insurance and they have a deal with the insurance company. She never did that for me. 
And she has this, she carries the same insurance company. So I called them up. I called up my dentist today. She wasn't there. I just left a message. Said, I'm not coming in on, uh, on, Monday, on Tuesday. So I'm going to this other place. I have her make the clip on, you know. Uh, but, I mean, that was, that was the whole thing I went through. Was I suddenly realized, came to the conclusion that my dentist really sucks. <laughs> but you don't want to change dentists because you're used to them and you trust them. And you don't want to go to somebody you don't know, you know, to start yeah. fooling around with your mouth. So, whatever. Anyway, by the way, did I mention it's going to be a fill-free night tonight? Uh, oh, I was wondering why you wasn't here. Yeah, well, I, did you wonder why I wasn't here last night? Uh, anyway, uh, so I, uh, I uh, and I'm just, I'm exhausted, too. I'm really tired because, not only because of all the technical shit going on here. I mean, yesterday, in, in spite of the fact that everything else fucks up on me, right? Mm. Uh, everything fucks up on me. Uh, I have a machine that we use as a server, and I did something where I, I tried to see what was on the uh, on my cloud account and whatever, and I did something, and all the folders that I had on the top of the desktop disappeared. Oh. And there was nowhere to find them. Luckily, I had another machine that I had as a backup that I then brought in here mm. and and uh, hooked it in, and immediately everything was working again. But, I mean, just of all the things to happen, then I had to reformat the old machine and do the backup on the old machine so if that this one ever goes, I can then swap them out again. But, I mean, these things, one thing after another. Then tonight, the guy does a sports show, writes me, my Internet isn't working. Oh, God. So I got to go in, I got to pull the show from the on demand list, you know? And it's just, it's one thing after another. I just, my, I, my life is just, a, I don't know. Am I complaining too much? No, it's all right. Mm. I feel like as I get older, I have less tolerance for things. I, it's not that I don't have less tolerance. I just, you know, I just, all I want to do is a show. That's all I want to do. But I, you know, I find myself constantly putting out fires because this thing isn't working or that thing isn't working or this computer breaks or that computer mm -hmm. breaks or uh, this particular computer sometimes I found uh, has a little slight delay on it when it goes out. Uh, <coughs> one thing after another, you just go, fuck it. You know, what do I do this every night for? I said, and I said to Marjorie, I said, it's just exhausting me. Plus, I think, I don't know, I have amoxicillin is what I'm taking, which is a form of penicillin. Yeah. And I am just exhausted. That might make you tired, the amoxicillin. Does it make you tired? Does penicillin? I know when I had a fever, he gave me amoxicillin. That's like a general, like, yeah. pharmacy. Yeah, he yeah. said it could make you tired. Yeah, he told me when I was taking for a cold or whatever, I had a fever a while back. Yeah. But you got to finish the whole prescription. Yeah, he did said. it make you tired? It didn't make me tired, Alex. Man, I, I went just, to sleep. I was going to sleep early. It's the medicine. I'm just exhausted, you know. There and, must be and, a side. On top of it, all the little technical shit that I've had to put up with, you know. Uh, so that's that's my happy life. How's how's yours? Oh my god! Anybody had a tooth pulled lately? Oh, oh I had a, I had a cavity filled, Alex. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> good. Well, at least you had a tooth to fill a cavity. Alex, you charged me $120. I got a big gaping hole back here. Nobody can see it. Nobody can see it, but I can feel it. And it was one of the oh. bigger teeth, so the gap is it's pretty big. Oh, so but you'll get it filled. You go to the other guy. What? You're okay. going to go to the other dentist, right? The other dentist who's going to make me the, uh, the uh, what well, they call them clip-ons is what they call them. Oh, really? But I, I used it when I had other teeth pulled to, while we were waiting for the thing to heal so they could do the mm -hmm. implant, implant. Uh, and because um, uh, they like to keep the teeth apart from each other mm -hmm. uh, because they have a tendency to have sex with each other if you don't mm -hmm. and and uh, I um, I you know uh, I I like the other one so much that when it came time to get them to put in the implant I was almost gonna say fuck it I like this this is fine <laughs> You yeah, know, keep it because it. After a while, you don't notice it's there, and if you do notice it's there, you play with it with your tongue. It's mm. fun, you know. But I mean, every morning you take it out at night, and every morning in the morning you just go come click. You clip on, grabs onto the two teeth on either side of it, and you're 
I tell you, Alex, the dentists probably hate people with false teeth because they lose business. No, they love people with false teeth because along the way they got to pull them. Oh, that's yeah. right. I didn't yeah. think of that. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's kind of hard to pull all the teeth at once. But, but I thought it was going to cost a fortune to get this tooth pulled. I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm preparing for twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. You know, double what my doctor said. You know, that's a little more expensive. I mean, she's all doom and gloom. I mean, this is going to yeah. the infection's going to go to your sinus and yeah. then to your brain, and you're going to be dead if we don't get you to a dentist, a guy to pull it today. Who said that? My dentist. They were putting the pressure on you, Alex, to get it done. I, all I know is that, I, so I finally decided as of today, I'm not going back to her. You know. Yeah, she and sounds too much like I'm going to go to Marjorie's to dentist, who says she says it's very nice and is the one who's going to make the uh, the clip on for me. Yes, Patrick. Now, this has nothing to do with dentistry, but it has to do with doctors putting pressure on you. Um, I had a pressure sore on my hip. Yeah. Ten years ago, yeah. and it was a, it was a small sore, but it went deep, and I had a nurse practitioner taking a look at it, and she said to me, "My goodness, you know what? We need to get you admitted right now because otherwise, this is going to get infected and it's going to go to the bone and it, you're going to end up losing your leg." And I said, "Well, wait a minute." I said. How did this become such a big deal when I was here a couple of days ago for the initial evaluation? It wasn't. Yeah. She said, it just is. And she said, I'm going to go consult with some people. I'll be right back. And I'm in, in my head. I'm thinking, I got to call work. I got a big project that I'm working on. I got all this other shit yeah. going on. She come back in the room. She says, we can get you admitted in two weeks. And I said, wait a minute. I said, you just got my heart rate up to about a minute. <laughs> and I said, you're telling me I'm going to fucking die here and lose my leg and all this infection. And now you're telling me, go home, treat it like you've been treating and come back in two weeks. So anyway, the reason I brought that up too is I went to my final doctor visit with the sore that I've had on my foot for the last several months. Yeah. It completely healed, and I mentioned to one of the nurses, I'm sure it says somewhere in my file that there's a particular person that I'm not to see. And she said, oh, yeah, it's right here, and it's on the cover of my fucking folder. I loved it. And they, everybody there knew enough that this dumb bitch was so incompetent with me 10 years ago that I wouldn't even see her for anything. And it's right on the cover. So it's the same thing, Alec. I don't like being pressured with medical crap when I know my own body, and if it is an emergency, it better be an emergency. You know? Well, you know, it, it, I mean, it, 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 what, what I didn't like was the panicky thing. You know, oh, I've got to get you to a doctor today. You've got to get that thing pulled right now. And I said, no. so she said, well, in the meantime, take the amoxicillin. Well, of course, by the next day, the amoxicillin, the, the, you know, the, the, it wasn't going away, but it was going down about 50%. You know, I probably could have wait, I probably could have taken the full course. I'm still taking it. I feel like I want to go to sleep right now. Uh, but, uh, and also my body has taken a bit of a beating over the last couple of days. But you know, when I saw you guys last, I didn't, you didn't even know I was going to have this thing. Oh. Neither did I, you know. Yeah. So, uh, fuck it, you know. Fuck them, mm -hmm. fuck them, fuck them. Hey, Tony, put your face more in the center of the. Can you do that? No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do that, it brings you. No, now you just went back down again. <laughs> there, there you go. See now, look what. Then we get to see all that orthodontia and everything. <laughs> sure. I had a hubbard in the bathroom. She's going to the bathroom with the walker, so I had to mute myself. This is a very funny joke, folks. It's Tony. Tony is the ultimate mom boy. That's true, yeah. She's driving me a little crazy, too. She's driving you a little <laughs> She repeats crazy. herself. What? She repeats herself. She repeats like herself. Okay. I know the stories now a little bit. Well, we—I uh, repeat myself 
And Marge oh. repeats herself a lot. As you get older, you repeat, you know, don't you repeat yourself a lot, Jeff? Of course. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. So Can you, you want to hear a funny story? My mother in law. Like, uh, what? Do you want to hear a funny? I'm oh, sorry. Do you want to hear? She likes to dream it. You know, all right. I got to put the heating blanket on. Now, hold on a second. She's going to try. I'm going to put it on 10. Hold on a second. She's turning into Norman Bates. It's, you know, <laughs> it is. It's, 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 it looks like it. It's, uh, it's getting scary <laughs> how much he's turning into Norman Bates. God damn. I can't believe it. Anyway, so anyway, well, that, um, on Saturday I went to the MoMA. I like that. Oh, good. That's pretty good. fancy uh, well, art stuff. Yeah. Well, you would have liked that, Patrick, too. I think. But, uh, anyway, so I mean, it, it it was it was just I'm you know so I'm uh I'm just I'm just so fucked. <laughs> I just you know I'm tired and I'm you know I almost didn't do a show tonight and then I said ah. You know, what the hell? At least I'd be with friends. You know, yes, uh, yes, Charlie. Well, this doesn't have anything to do with what we've been talking about. But you were talking with Will Durst about Mayor Pete, and yeah. he's thirty-seven years old. Thirty. So he would be by far the youngest president ever elected if he went. So. I'll tell you something. I think he's got a good shot. He's I agree with you. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him several times now on TV and on, on interviews, and he is good. Every answer he gives is right, even yeah. when like somebody in the crowd that he was speaking to the yesterday uh, started yelling at him about your abomination of God or something like that. I don't know <laughs> what it was, and uh, he just handled it so well. He went, you know, well, you know, I have to deal with my God on that one. And since he created me, I figure, you know, yeah, I, 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 it must be okay with him. But, you know, yeah. you, you, do have, you have the right to believe possible. what you want to believe. And, you know, and he, he just, he didn't, like, fight back. He didn't attack back. Uh, but he was strong. And it, there's something about the guy that I really appeals to me a great deal. Uh, he's so refreshing compared to any of the other candidates. And I think it's, if people want somebody who isn't political, and that's why they voted for Trump, this may be the guy for them. Mm. You know? If they can ever pronounce his name. Buttigieg. It is a tough Buttig name. Buttigieg? Buttigieg. 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 Actually, they're just calling him Mayor Pete. Yes. And they're leaving it at that. Mainly because they know that if America has to pronounce that name, you know. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Remember, there was a time when we couldn't say Obama's name. Yeah. Yeah, that was a tough well, one. Barack, right? Barack Obama's not a difficult name, but it's a no, strange name. No, but it was name. just unusual. It's a strange name. This yes. one is unpronounceable when you look at it. You look at I, it and you go, uh, what is it? Uh, butt face? What is the word? What, what's the, <laughs> well, how do you pronounce this? But it, 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 if anything, that's a plus because it makes people talk about it. Yeah. Okay? So, um, it, 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 you know, I think that I think he's the stealth candidate to begin with. Uh, let's, let's tick it off. The only thing he's got going against him, if you want to call it something that goes against him, is that he's gay. Uh, because that's the only thing that anybody who's like a, a, a heavy Christian can complain about. But then the next thing on the, on, the, on the ticket is he's a very religious person. He's an Episcopal, I think. And he's very religious. Okay? It kind of bothers me, but a lot yeah, of other people, it kind of goes like, wait a minute, he's gay and he's religious. How do they... I guess that worked. I don't know. I never met a boy. I, there must be other gay yeah. people in my church. Oh. You know, and, come on. There's a lot of people in the Catholic Church who are gay. Oh yeah, and they're all priests. Anyway, <laughs> that's right. Uh, 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 then, then, two term, two two tours in Afghanistan. Wow, that's pretty okay. good. I don't. Uh, so that adds to the uh, the whole appeal of this guy. Um, there, there we go. Hold on a second. I just got, I just got, to, I got to add somebody to the, uh, to the crowd here. 
uh, and it would be Rob Alfano. Let me see if I can find him on the list yet. Is he here? Is he here? There he is. Okay. I'm here. All right. And uh, now you're part of the citizen panel. There you are. You got your own. Uh, you're, you're the secret square. X gets the square. X gets the square. Mm -hmm. uh, at, so, so two tours in Afghanistan. Uh, Rhodes Scholar speaks seven different languages. All right. Has administrative uh, 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 executive experience, even though it was a mayor of a city, but that's more experience than Trump ever had. You know. Yes, Rob. He's, He's too, too intelligent. intelligent. People, People don't, don't care about intelligence. intelligence. He's, He's gay. gay. He'll, He'll never, never get elected. elected. I don't think that his intelligence is obnoxious, however. It, yeah, yeah, but it, it doesn't It doesn't impress people. people. Loud, boisterous, impresses people today. Do you think? Thinking, thought, does not impress people today. Hmm. Well, he better be, be, he better be gimmicky. Because, because that's, that's what, what gets people well, elected. Well, the gimmick is he's gay, and we'd have the first... Yeah, but that's, the White that, that, that goes against all the religious freaks. Well, you know something? I don't know that... Oh, boy. I don't know that that's a, that's a, that's a deficit. I, it, it's a bit of a deficit. He admits, he said, there are a certain amount of people who won't vote for me because I'm gay. He said, that's... He said that. But those people probably wouldn't have voted for me because I'm liberal. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm to the left. Uh, he said, so uh, I don't know who I'm trying to win over by saying, hey, I'm not gay, or, you know, so what if I'm gay, or keeping in the closet about it. Yes, Patrick? It's not as intelligent for me personally, even though I wouldn't vote for him because of his political beliefs. Um, I've seen him, and he is, and y'all can disagree with me, and that's fine. He is head and shoulders above AOC on the ability to answer a fucking question and sound intelligent. She still sounds like a bartender a lot of time with a lot of likes and a lot of ums and a lot of uh, 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 but he comes off very much like a Bill Clinton or a Barack Obama where you can throw a question at him and it may take him a second to answer it but he's going to answer it in an intelligent fashion, and that's attractive to me, yeah. where I, I appreciate that. And maybe it's just me, you know, I, maybe I'm the only one on the right that would think that way, but I appreciate that versus when I see AOC, <laughs> you look at her and think, damn, she looked good, but she, she sounds, sounds like a moron sometimes, sometimes because she was. Part of it is her age, that she's under 30, and she's still not, you know, cultivated. Yeah, but, but Patrick, you got to hand her credit for something. Here she is, just new to the whole thing, okay? Uh, and the amount of publicity she's gotten and the amount of, uh, of, of, of generated enthusiasm behind things she <laughs> says has been exceptional. For somebody well, her age. You know, I mean, sure. you may not like her, but I'm saying that she has been getting the traction. Yeah, but but with with uh, the mayor, what I can't pronounce Booty it. Jig. Mayor booty Jig. Yeah. Bo bo booty Jig. Bo booty whatever. Booty call. Booty call. Booty, <laughs> his, his ability to answer things yeah. and not being much older than her, he just seems older and, and more wise and, and much more attractive to me as someone who I would listen to mm -hmm. than her. Yeah. Well, let me put somebody else on the uh, panel here. We just uh, got a call from, uh, let's see here. Is he up here yet? Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, sometimes people don't come up that fast and we have to do something about it. But uh, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, add to our panel. Josh Wheeler, there he is, folks. Uh, hello, Josh. We're talking. Uh, 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 first, Rob had his hand up, and then I want to ask Josh something. Yes, Rob. I was going to say that I think I think um, the, the biggest thing we have to do in 2020 is to defeat Trump. And if we uh, run somebody who's gay up there, that's going to be a problem. It's going to be harder to beat. Trump, because, because we, we need somebody, somebody <laughs> more central, more centric, 
and no, not somebody so. Okay, let me ask you polarized. this. Let me ask you this then: Who uh, it would be more difficult to get elected, uh, a homosexual or a Jew? Oh, wow. you're right. We never had a Jewish president yet. Uh, and uh, and Bernie's Jewish. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the answer to that, but I think I think. S- not only centric in the way of being either Jewish or or you know, being radical, like whether you're Jewish you or whether I, you're. I, I think you need here. to have centralized, central based policy. Let me say something about. Can I ask a question? question? What what what'd you say? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Did yeah. a, did a president ever convert? Like, say, he went in as a Catholic and then he said, "I'm converting." No. When he was in office. No. 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 Usually people didn't make a big deal about what a president's religion was anyway, except if he was Jewish. Uh, because, you know, you're going to see a I woman a president, deal, you're going to see a woman president, you're going to see a gay president before you ever see a Jewish president in this country. I, I, I still think that you need, you need, um, you need to run on moderate policies because you'll, you'll pull away enough uh, Republicans who have had enough of Donald Trump. Trump. is, is, is moderate in in most ways okay thing about him that i think is good is that when you see him you know he says i'm gay he's it, there's not a he trace. apologizes for it no no there is no, <laughs> no there is no trace of, of of gayness in his presentation he's just a good looking clean cut looking guy uh you know i mean not that all gays have to be flamboyant it just some are he's not he, he's the kind of gay that maybe America, who would not have voted for gays, would vote for. Just like Obama was just kind of white enough to make some white voters feel comfortable with him. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yes, pa- Patrick, and then I've got to ask Josh about this. Yeah. Uh, Rob, do you think he, he'd be all right as a VP? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that as well, in that he's young enough where he could be VP, he could get enough um, experience under him, and whether he's gay or he isn't gay, I think if he showed himself as a vice president, um, very much in the same light that Biden worked with Obama where he was out actually doing things and not just right. sitting behind the curtain as a lot of VPs do. Um, I think then your uh, your fears might be take away. You know, you give him four or eight years as a VP, then maybe he'd be ready. Yeah. Right. But an object an objective one is done. We could be Trump. We have mm. to beat Trump. Mm. Well, I don't know. Uh, yes, Jeff. I have one question about about gay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have gay people on on both sides of my families. Okay? We all do. And and I was going to say, is there anybody who doesn't have gay people these days that are in your family? No, no, but that's, that's not, not the point, point though. There, there, there is a, a faction of people who think they're an abomination, abomination. right? There's a, there, you, there's a turnoff factor there. It's a risk. But anybody that thinks like that's not going to vote for a Democrat anyway. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, I would disagree there. Uh, there's a lot of people that work in blue collar union type of jobs places like I work the locker rooms yeah. uh, a lot of blacks who otherwise would vote for a uh, a Democrat uh, a Joe Biden type a Sherrod Brown type who's been elected here many times who's a big union blue collared guy uh, who I who who right rightly or wrongly I would say wrongly uh, the first time they see him on stage kissing a man, it's going to scare the fucking bejesus out of him. Well, I mean, I, I don't... not saying I like it, just saying that's the way I agree. It is. Uh, right. I, that's yeah. sad. It is sad. Hmm. Um, hmm. I don't know. Am I, am I out of sync, by the way, folks? Somebody on the uh, chat line. 
uh, tell no. me if I look out of sync. No, no I well, I know, but on the show itself, when it's oh. running out there, because somehow I seem to be lagging a little bit here. So I, I don't know. Uh, for sure. And I'll tell you another, another group of people that are going to hate it are military people and veterans that he's otherwise yeah, would vote Democratic. Yeah, he's, but he's, he was in, did two tours in Afghanistan. Two tours in Afghanistan. That's pretty yeah, good. And, 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 uh, and he probably kept his mouth shut about it the entire time. And I guarantee you there are going to be people that served with him who liked him at the time and are going to see him on stage kissing a man and they're going to be like, that motherfucker. I mean, I, the law I work with, I just, I mean... Do you think he's going to necessarily kiss a man while he's... Uh, I saw him do it yesterday, uh, yeah. I thought, on uh, when they showed him 50 gazillion times on MSNBC. I could have swore I thought I saw him out there with somebody, but... I mean, somebody's going to get a picture. Well, I wish, I wish, I wish uh, someone, one of these candidates, would come out as a lesbian, and then we get a little girl-on-girl -girl action. <laughs> yes. <you know. laughs> well, that wouldn't scare people as much. No. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's the. I'm just being honest. I well, mean, Lenny Bruce used to have I a bit he did you. about how people will deny that any woman is a lesbian. Yeah. Uh, you know, they will go, "Boy, she can kick a ball as good as any other guy." You know, but, uh, you know, I should like to fuck her, you know, and, and, and they, they, they don't want to, the last thing they want to admit is that, you know, anyway, yes, Patrick. Uh, Kevin uh, just messaged me that you're echoing uh, going out. I have no idea why. I have no idea why. I'm telling you right now. I've got uh, all the things that would make it echo, not echo. Okay, so I, I don't know what what's happening, and, and I'm tired of dealing with these problems, you know. <laughs> Let me see here. Let me go to the eight uh, where I got to put uh, uh, Tom Yamaguchi in here. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so let me see here. Tom Yamaguchi. How much of an echo is there out there? Anybody know? Uh, I, oh, 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 by the way, my 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 echo started talking to me. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. As a result of that. Did that answer your question? Fuck you. <laughs> what? She goes, but, but makes a sound if I said it. Echo. Fuck you. It goes. Gong. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like to be sworn at. No, am I echo? Are we echoey out there? Alex, audio is good. Panel is reverbing intermittently. I cannot yeah. figure that one out to save my <laughs> life. Okay? Uh, and I, I don't know how to solve it, and I don't know what the problem uh -huh. is. Uh, all the, uh, all the uh, things are down. All the audio, <laughs> each of these screens has no audio coming out of it. Uh, so I, I don't know what, what, what the what the problem is. Uh, you know. Alex. Yeah. Uh, Kevin just sent me again. He said, it's just the panel, not you. Well, I have no idea why the panel, you know, I don't hear it that way here. You know. I heard it I, when I uh, first tuned in. I heard Patrick was, uh, mm -hmm. when Patrick first came on, he was echoing and everybody else was fine. Really? Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what the what the problem is here. Mm -hmm. Patrick is number three, and number three oh. is is the audio oh. is number down on number three. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. There is no number three here. Ah. Hmm. 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 But your voice right now sounds perfect. Yeah. Well, well because you're listening on Skype. Yeah. Uh, I I don't have a. Uh, let me see here. If I go here. Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I know what that problem might be. I don't know. Hold, hold on a second. I'm just going to go to a three shot here for a second, just so I can see here. One, two, and then uh, there's no three. Wow. That's strange. Hmm. Oh, well. I, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, everybody else, nobody else is echoing just uh, just uh, Tom. Or, I mean, just... Uh, uh, Patrick. It was Patrick. It was Patrick, it was Patrick when, when I was listening. listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well. Am I echoing? It, it, the guy in the middle is worst. That's Rob. That, that's Rob. Mm -hmm. Well, Rob isn't in the middle. I don't know who he thinks is in the middle. Okay. Well, he, uh, he was in the middle when they made that 
comment. Yeah, I don't know. I give up. Fuck it. Yeah. I, 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 and this may all clear itself up when I get my machine back because we never had this problem with the other machine. So I don't know where the echo could possibly be coming from. Is it annoying? Is it annoying or just it's there? It's it's fairly uh, heavily echo. Oh wow! Well, I it's know. distracting. It's, it's distracting. distracting. The guy yeah. in the middle is worse. Rob is the worst. I don't know. I give up, folks, because Rob is uh, number. Um, let's see, Rob is number five, and at number five, uh, we have five is there. There's five is not up. It's not a. It's, it's a zero. I have no idea. The problem is I have no number three. I'm looking at my mixer here. That's the reason I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't see a number th an audio on number three. So, ah, who, who knows? Who knows? I, I give up. You're right. actually controlling, controlling every one of our cameras with a separate <laughs> input on your I board? I can, but I turn the, all the audio off on them. Otherwise, uh, they would hear an echo. You see. Uh, yes, yes, uh, 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 Tom. <laughs> Since we're on the subject of homosexuality, yeah, uh, maybe you like a visit from the crypt keeper. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so I've got, got an obituary here from the New York Times. Times. Hmm. Dr. Richard Green, one of the earliest and most vocal critics of psychiatry's classification of homosexuality as a mental disorder, died April 6th at his home in London. He was 82. In 1972, shortly after completing his specialty in psychiatry, he defied, uh, defied the advice of colleagues and wrote a paper in the International Journal of Psychiatry questioning the premise that homosexuality is a disease or homosexual is inferior. So he's among the people that got the diastic, diastic, uh, diastic the, the manual, manual, the DSM, yeah, yeah, to yeah. actually reclassify homosexuality as normal behavior. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why I bring that up, and I really appreciate the, the, the input of, 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 of Josh and, uh, and uh, you know, and, uh, and Rob, mm -hmm. uh, but I think, I think our, cha our society is changing quite radically. And when you consider that we have, this is only about four decades, it's amazing how far we've come. Mm -hmm. It really is. I really think we should really give serious consideration that Pete Buttigieg is actually very electable as a gay man. Okay. Hey, before, uh, I'm, I'm going to do something to you. And if I if mute you, you can unmute yourself. Okay, uh, Tom, but I'm going to do this. Let me see if that Tom, happens. I would, can, while he's you, doing that, talk, I would agree Tom, with you me. in a Wait normal minute. election year. Talk to me. He Wait seems minute. very on, electable and it's worth taking Tom, a chance. Tom, talk to me. Now I'm not hearing, we're Tom, not hearing can you hear, Alex. Can you, can you talk to me? Oh, you can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that, I thought that might solve the problem. I, yeah, by echoing? Uh, somebody says it keeps, um, wow, Tom is sounding crazy. I, I have no idea what it could be. For you know what it is. I'll bet it's, it's the, you know, know when it was just three of you, it was no problem. problem. When yeah. once four, when when when, uh, when um, Patrick joined, and every, every time, time since, everyone is getting worse and worse and worse, and worse, is that you probably have a leak somewhere. It maybe even could be some some connection, because it seems like when you do three, there was no problem. It was clear. Mm. Patrick was the first one, and it's gotten progressively worse with every person who has come on. Well, it wasn't doing that with my uh, with my other machine, right? But it's doing it with this machine, right? And I have no idea why. Mm -hmm. I have no idea why. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, I can go to settings here, and I don't seem to have any uh, uh, problem with the the audio output is. Uh, <laughs> is uh, normal uh, there's what's coming in uh, nothing's going out uh, so I don't, I don't I have no idea I, it just makes no sense to me so. well Patrick's got his hand up 
Fading in out, let it go, ch uh, uh, let it go chasing your tail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have no idea what it could be, uh, you know. Uh, and and I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem. Um, uh, I'm probably uh, w if I had my other machine back, it wouldn't be a problem. Maybe something with. The when are you getting it back? Do you know? I don't know. They've had it for a fucking week, and they haven't even given you an idea of what was wrong. They 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 thought that it might have something to do with the with the uh, 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 graphics boards, which is fine. Just fix it, you know. <coughs> but the guy that when I was there said he'll order the graphics boards, and then he found out he couldn't because they have to figure out what's wrong with it first before they order the graphics boards. Makes sense. So I'll probably probably wait until Monday to even get around to it. So then they order the graphics boards, and they take about three days to get to them. So you know, I, you know, so I don't know what the echo is, but maybe I wouldn't have it if I were back on my old machine with the way it was set up. You know, because we never had the problem before. You know, so I don't know what it is. I give up. Mm. I maybe, I mean, I just won't do a show until I get my other machine back. You know. This is getting ridiculous. Uh, just pretend they're all 1978 D eight DJs with ver super hit one, <laughs> hit one, hit one. Yeah, yeah. Coming in at number one. Yeah, I and I can't even figure out why I don't have an audio switch here for 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 number three, which is uh, uh, which is Patrick. Yes, Patrick. You want the little cripple to go away? N no, I don't think the little cripple's doing it. I, I yeah. just don't know why you're not. I know, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. I will do something, Patrick. Uh, well, let, wait, hold on a second. I got an idea here. Uh, number eight. Uh, let me see here. Uh, wait, 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 eight, eight, eight. Okay. Let me put you on eight. Okay. And we'll see if it gets rid of it. This is just a, you know, troubleshooting, folks. That's what we're doing here. That's what I do all day long. Uh, let me see here. Darth Pat, there we go. Okay, you're on that. Uh, you're going to be on that uh, that in the, in that place, and I'm going to take you out of the place where you're at, uh, and I'm just going to put um, somebody else in your place. Okay, well, uh, I, I'm not going to put anybody in that place. Uh, let me just. Uh, what do I do? Uh, three. Well, how do I how do I just turn three off? Okay. Skype, uh, local. Okay, local. What will I get? Anything? Mm -hmm. we, we get, get a, picture a picture of me. me. Okay, so we'll, we'll get two pictures of me. What the hell? You know? And this one is, uh, is, is more in sync than my other one. So, I don't know. Now, tell me, everybody, is, is he echoing? Talk to me, uh, Patrick. Hello. Hello. Is Patrick echoing now? Uh... That's going to take about Oh, will you seconds. shut up? Every time I see the word echo, <laughs> Maybe you should te temporarily change your name back to Alexa. Well, I'm, you know, if, if you stop echoing, I won't have this problem. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I, I, Actually, I, now you're echoing, Alex. Now, e I, now everybody is echoing. Now with everybody. What you, with what you did... Yeah, you're echoing. I'm echoing. Okay, well, let me get rid of my picture up there. And let me put Patrick's picture up there. I uh, just wish I could get rid of that uh, picture in there completely. Um, hmm. Well, I could. Uh, let me see here. Let me just turn that up. Oh, uh, let me see here. Uh, anybody? Uh, how's the echo now? You know. Rob and Patrick sound underwater. I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what it is. Um, but what the hell? You know, I give up. You know, if I'm here tomorrow night, it's going to be a, a godsend because I just I can't put up with this shit anymore. My other my other thing was working. There is no there's no Patrick on this mixer. You know. Um, okay, whatever you did, Alex. Yeah, I don't hear ec when you said when you said because uh, I'm listening to the show that mm -hmm. is coming. When you said so, how is it now after you made that last change? You're not echoing anymore. How about the rest of the panel? 
I haven't heard anybody else talk. Yeah. Well. Everybody else has been quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Matt Crash, all is good. So when I got I rid of the... When I, I think you're good now. I might have to go back and change that number three or something. Uh, because uh, I'm hearing myself now. I am not echoing. Really? Oh, good. Yep, it's good. Well, it's good I, figured, I figured out what it, I think. Then we figured out what it was. It's the number three NDI, and I've got to somehow get rid of it and replace it with a new one. Um, but I can't do that now. I'll do that tomorrow when I work around it. Yeah, I'll work around it. Uh, it it but boy, it's just you know. So so we got rid of it, folks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, pa, pa, uh, say something, Josh. Say something to me. Uh, well, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How about okay. how about how about uh, say something, uh, uh, Tom? Okay. How about this? Okay. Exactly. All right. And how about uh, how about uh, oh I don't know uh, Patrick? Say something. Uh, what the hell is going on, everybody? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, it says all clear. People yeah, saying the panel good. good now, but remember, we're twenty seconds behind what you were are doing. I guess uh, it has something to do with that number three uh, NDI, which I will change. I will get rid of and change tomorrow, and uh, maybe by changing it, it'll it'll fix it up. Uh, because I don't, I can't, I don't get the, um, I don't get that, but that number three is not listed here, and it may actually be up on, for some reason. I'll have to, I'll, I'll take care of it. Whatever. Anyway, so back to Pete Buttigieg, the Buttigieg. Uh, so what we're saying is, for the most part, am I, not, am I out of sync, folks? Uh, 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 what was I going to say? So, uh, in the yeah. case of Pete Buttigieg, I, you know, at Patrick, I mean, could you see yourself voting for him if you got to know more about him? No, no. He he he's already said that he, that he's uh, that he has nothing in common with him politically, so he's not going to vote for him anyway. Yeah, I, I, my my comments were on his intelligence and. His ability to uh, outshine AOC on a dime. I mean, you know, he mm -hmm. can answer questions without having to really think about it. So I, I would, I would listen to him the same as I enjoyed listening to Clinton, Bill Clinton, talk, because I appreciate intelligence. So yeah. So then that begs the question: If Donald Trump is your only other option, do you just not vote? No, there's always a third party. Well, not always, is there? Well, there's a write-in. So I, I could write somebody in. I'd write in Marco Rubio or something. Yes, uh, uh, Tom. Well, I brought this up before. I'll brought it again. If you are in a swing state like Wisconsin and you vote for a third party, you're really voting for Trump. So just admit it. You're going to be voting for Trump. <laughs> If you I'm, don't vote for the Democrat, I'm just be honest. It's, it's just the honest truth. You will be voting for Trump if you don't vote for the Democrat. Okay, so the question is now, who is the worst candidate for the Democrats to run? I think they're all pretty bad. And I'll tell you why. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I mean, because they all have a, a serious flaw. I think for Biden, besides this crap that's going on with the you know, him touching and Saturday Night Live did a very funny thing about it. He's old, right? Mm -hmm. Then you got, then you have so many people talking about all these radical ideas. Yeah. It's sort of like the Tea Party on the left. Everybody wants to socialize this and socialize that. And you're already hearing Trump. He's already hammering the, the, the drum about it. Oh, the social, he's not even calling them Democrats. He's calling them socialists. And that is not going to get the Democrats elected. Um, that's how, and because unless you get a moderate in there, you, you're going to lose to Trump. I, think I might disagree. Oh, I hope I you're disagree. right. Because <laughs> the problem is not that we got to get Republicans to vote for the Democrats. The problem is we got to get the Democrats to turn out and vote. There are a lot more Democrats in the in the country than there are Republicans. 
It's just they don't come out and vote because there's nobody that excites them. Hmm. I agree with Charlie. I agree with him. It, really? I think Mayor Mayor Pete would excite the young people tremendously, and they would come out and vote. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I heard him refer to himself on the stage the other day as a millennial, and I guess he's 37 years old, and I'm 36, and I'm almost 37, and I thought, please, please motherfucker. motherfucker. Don't even lock me in with them fucking retarded people. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, first of all, right there, I was like, you know what? Fuck you, man. I'm, we're done already. I mean, you want to lock me in with them fucking group of retards? That's fuck. what a millennial no fuck, is. I, I, I would vote for Trump before I vote for a millennial. You fuck this <laughs> ass. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, but a, a millennials came of age at the millennium. So what were you, 18, 17, 18, when the millennium hit? That's why you were a millennium? Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's some other shit you can put me in, but not, not fucking that. Patrick? Okay. Um, to Rob point, I can tell you within my family, and most of you know from over the years, everybody minus a handful are Democrats. They will not vote for a Democrat that calls themselves a socialist. They will do a write-in, or they will vote for like a Joe Stein, a Green Party, something yeah. different. Just like in 2016. <laughs> what? Especially because my family, there's a lot of military, and they did not go to war to support socialism. And whether or not you guys can argue a point about that, good or bad, that's my family. And, and that's that's a mentality. Yes, it's a yes. mentality. Well, well th that's all I'm saying is like to win the the 2020 election or to, to beat Trump, whatever. The people that they're really thinking about or focusing on are obviously the people that he won that Clinton didn't, not the people that would have always voted for Clinton to begin with. So they're talking about Wisconsin, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania. They're talking about people like a lot of times like myself except maybe with not my liberal background people that work in the factories people that work in jobs that pay forty four thousand dollars a year or fifty two thousand dollars a year that wear a uniform not a suit those kinds of people and there are a lot of those people are democrats but the problem with the democratic party in my opinion is is they've moved away from uh people like tim ryan in Akron, who tried to be speaker, and they've stayed with people like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. And I'm just telling you, again, these are observations. I don't always agree with all this, but a lot of people who work jobs like I work or have my background or live in this area that are on the fringe sit back and, and, and all they see is a, is a fucking uh, San Francisco communist and, and a fucking New York Jew. And they don't, I'm just telling you, they don't see anybody that has anything in common with them and then when someone like that does start to speak like a tim ryan or someone nancy pelosi squashes it and gets on 60 minutes well, that, 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 that's like yeah. i mean i'm a hardened fucking democrat and she can suck my fucking dicks well i tell her it's like fuck you nancy pelosi i'm so sick of hearing from this fucking you know it's just like they're wearing me out and, and i'm one of their you know most counted on people that would vote for him, and it's just. But that's just what people around here see. You know, the people that change their clothes at the, in the locker room after work are the people that they had a problem with, and they they they're not taking any steps, in my opinion, to fix it. Which is why I said all along that the only people that could maybe trick him and and and, and to voting for him is a guy who looks like he might have changed his clothes after work, and that's a guy like Joe Biden or Sherrod Brown. Tom's got his hand up, and then uh, then Tony. Yes, Tom. Okay, so let's talk about that communist in San Francisco, <laughs> uh, who is now, who is now Speaker of the House. True. And how she get that way? Because we won the last election, and we won the last elections because the candidates were running. We're listening to that communist in San Francisco and, ta and, and listening to, we need to talk about health care. We need to do, you know, we need to focus on that. And we won. So, 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 you know, to, to say that, that she's a loser is just not true. It's just it, the, the last election proved that we have, a, we have a winning message 
and we can win in 2020. And I think, getting back to Charlie's point, he had it right. I mean, when, when Trump won those, those swing states after losing three, by 3 million of the popular vote, he won by like maybe 77,000 votes. Yeah. And that's not people that crossed over and, and said, I don't like the Democrats, I'm voting for Trump. Those are people that did not vote. And I'll tell you the truth, I talked to a number of those people on the phone when I was making calls for, for Hillary Clinton. I was pleading with them. They said, oh, no, she doesn't interest me. I said, well, aren't you worried about the Supreme Court? Oh, I don't know. You know, and, and so we do need a candidate that incites us. And we can't, we can't play middle of the road. We've got to have, get our base out. And yes, we do need to get a lot of independence out. But I, I think just playing it safe is the, not the way to go about it. I rest my case. Okay, say something? Yeah, sure. Tell me. You know, I'm going to think. I think I know how you can beat Trump. I don't know if the guy has a name for a candidate yet, but they need somebody. I'm going to go back in time to the 70s. He needs somebody like Jimmy Carter, somebody in the middle of America, somebody who's soft-spoken, nice guy, and can connect with middle America. I would disagree with you on that. I, um, I, I, I think we're not living in those times anymore where Jimmy Carter could get elected. That The whole tone of the country has changed, and the whole uh, sensibility of the country has changed. Um, so you don't think he has, you don't think, because we're going to win New York and L.A., you oh, know listen, you got this. It, 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 it's just, it's crass, you know, and um, uh, I, I don't know what to say, you know. Uh, well, I'm thinking somebody, t the polar opposite of Trump, who's not confrontational, who's I, not, like, I could see, get like, beaten up by Then you get beaten up by Trump. I don't know that you need the polar opposite of Donald Trump. You just need somebody who's like Donald Trump, who can who who spins up a machine. He's talking about socialism now. He's not using the word Democrat anymore. He's talking to uh, the socialist, the socialist. He is at war yeah. to get elected. We don't have that on our side. We're still playing by the old rules. I'll tell you. Let me tell you, say something about Pete Buttigieg again, if I'm pronouncing his name even close to what it's, how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, when D Barack Obama was running for the nomination initially, mm -hmm. uh, I said I considered him the stealth candidate, that he could win this thing. Uh, and uh, I, I precisely said he could win this thing because he had all the, all the things going for him. He was good looking. You know, he had all the, all the uh, accoutrement of, the, of, of what he needed to do. Uh, a lot of people kind of said to me and acted like uh, I was an idiot and I, I, I came from outer space when I said that. But he got nominated and he won the presidency. I, th I feel the same way about Pete Buttigieg. I feel that he, again, is that person that I see as the stealth candidate that, you know, people go, well, but, but he's gay and he can't get elected. Well, Barack Obama was black and he couldn't get real couldn't get elected i think pete Buttigieg is a is a uh, uh, how can i put it? is a uh, is a homosexual who america could feel comfortable with okay he's he's not over, he's not overtly fay in his presentation he's well spoken he's intelligent he's good looking good looking guy uh, and uh, i just think uh, I think he, he could become the stealth candidate because he's somebody that Trump would find it very hard to fight. That's that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. Because he couldn't really insult them, really. Because well, he, he would really... have to go out of, you know, he'd have to go out of his way. He'd almost have to go to the word fag in order to insult him. Uh, yeah. I don't think he, yeah. he could, Trump could find it easy to do that. He can't assail him for his patriotism. You know, no, you're right. Right? You can't Truth say him for, uh, for, for being uh, a, a non-Christian because he's very Christian. Okay, you know, I mean, true. there's nothing, there are no fights that Trump could have in his normal way. You know, he yeah. couldn't come out with something like Pocahontas for him, you know. Yeah, that whatever. was a really good one. I, I think that that's I what makes him such a stealth candidate against Trump. And that once people got to know him, 
Well, they would, even if they were kind of like, well, he's gay, but he's kind of, he says what I want to hear, you know. Let me ask you another question. Uh, this is another one coming up. And I'm sorry, folks, if I'm out of sync. Uh, I tried to solve that problem the other night, and I did solve it. Uh, but I thought this would solve it, but in the long run it did, and I went to a different... I'll, I'll go back to the other way. Until, until I get my equipment back, then we should be fine. Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders did something I thought was very good over the weekend. He went to a town hall at Fox, and everybody's going, the Democratic Party says, we're not going to run any of our debates on Fox. We're not going to have anything to do with Fox. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Bernie said, I'm going over to Fox. And he was, it was a smart move. Uh, go up against the competition. Well, I mean, to begin with, do you want to go do a, a town hall at MSNBC where everybody who's watching are people that agree with you in the first place? Right, or would you, you rather go over bubble. to Fox and make those people kind of like you? And the fact was, they came away liking Bernie. In fact, they <laughs> cheered him when he talked about his yeah. Medicare for all. So that you know, there That's there was a case of somebody being able to win over a room full of conservatives. <clears throat> I, is is the Democratic Party making a big mistake by not going over to Fox? They should be at Fox more often. Yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah they yeah. should be at Fox more often. Mm -hmm. You know. So. Yeah. By the way, up in the up in the top uh, right hand corner, folks, on your screen, what you're seeing is you're seeing a double image of like Josh right now. But if somebody else talks, you'll suddenly see them in that space. I tried for a while to make that full screen. It's it's called active speaker. And when somebody's speaking, I can uh, put them on. I tried doing it earlier with uh, a thing that you were seeing for a short time uh, this way. But the problem is that for some reason it, it stutters a bit when it's in full screen. I have no idea why. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's, you know, that's the way it is on the air. Not here in the, in the studio. It's fine on the screen, but uh, otherwise. But, uh, you know, if somebody else talks, just somebody, anybody talk. Uh, Tom, start talking. Okay. Uh, one thing, you know, just think about, I, I, I think I was saying? an argument. Yeah. I was hearing an argument. There was a difference between doing a town hall and doing a, a, yes. a debate. That you know, one of the things about the debate is Fox makes money. Will be making money off of that. And I think one of the Democratic Party arguments was that you know why should we you know make money from them when they're trashy us all the time? But you have. But I, I see your point. I think that uh, yeah, why not do a, a well, debate? Well, I mean, like I, my, my feeling is why go to a place. Uh, and put all your eggs in one basket. If you go to MSNBC, all you're doing is talking to your crowd. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, they, you want to mm -hmm. go somewhere where you're going to get to people you didn't get to before. And Fox has a lot of them. And some of them are going to look at you and go, hey, you know, he's pretty good. Like when this crowd, when when Bernie started talking about Medicare for all, they applauded him. Yeah, the people, people with, with, with their, their uh, insurance, insurance their, through their, their, their employers. employers. Yeah. And uh, Buttigieg is also uh, talking about going on to uh, Fox uh, uh, Town, Town Hall, too. too. So we'll see what happens. Well, I think, I think it would be very smart of those people it to would. do exactly that. You know? Uh, and, and, and I, you know, I, 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 I can't figure out why they shouldn't. You know? uh, go to where... The enemy is because the enemy is who you want to win over. So I, I have to take it off my hat off to Bernie for that one. Especially, Especially right, right now, now because, because there's, there's a lot of people, people, a lot of Republicans who are feel disenfranchised by Donald Trump. And they're, they're looking for what else is out there right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if, if you can come across and make some sense... You know, maybe you you'll get some votes. Could be. Could very. You're not going to get them on MSNBC or CNN. That's for damn sure. Yeah. A lot of Fox viewers were hit with that tax cut. Ended up costing them money. What's that? Which tax cut? The Trump tax cut. Oh, because it caused. When they yeah. finally filed the taxes and they saw what they had to pay, there were a lot of Fox <laughs> viewers around the the 10 million families that ended up paying more. Yeah, most of us did. 
Yeah. So, you know. Uh, I, I just think that uh, 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 there are a lot of arguments that could be made to middle America that a middle America is not going to hear uh, as a result of, uh, of, of, of staying away from those venues. That's right. And, and, and it would be very smart for them to do it. So, you know, uh, I, I, I have to take my... His, and, and after Bernie's success the other night, and by the way, they were on their best behavior, um, they... Um, it, 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 it made for a, you know, for them, for the Democratic Party to sit and think, well, maybe we should do something about this. Mm. Maybe it would be good if we, if we uh, uh, changed things up and, and went over there and that it wouldn't be a bad idea. But it took Bernie to do it. He was getting heat for doing it. Mm. You know. Uh, in the small time we have left, uh, uh, over the weekend, we, well, over the last couple of days, we lost uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. Yeah. Uh, and in one of the stupidest remarks in his entire presidency, <laughs> Donald Trump said, the way they can solve this problem is just take uh, one of those water things, they dump water on it, and help put the fire out. Uh, apparently, he wasn't watching the news. When they explained the reason they weren't doing that was if they did that, the entire place would collapse because it's an old structure, and it couldn't take that kind of wetness. Yes, uh, Tom. I don't know. I forgot the comedian, but what uh, one comedian uh, on Twitter would say he's waiting for Trump to tweet us. They just say that the the French sweep their uh, sweep their floors to prevent the fires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, when I heard this la that last night, I went, you know, he, and he's acting like, you know, I'm really smart, and I'm giving you advice on how you could have put out that fire. Why don't you just drop one of those? water things on there and already they had announced that they couldn't do that you know because of the traumatic effect it would have on the uh, yeah. you know so uh, I, I give up you know uh, he just gets more and more idiotic by the day and there's nothing we can do about it and he's a moron yes there is, huh? <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we, we have to make sure he doesn't get elected, but uh, right. part of making sure he doesn't get reelected is by getting the right person in place uh, to not get him reelected. So. Anyway, I just, you know. Yes, Patrick. Is anybody else aware that the Alaska Mosque caught fire at the same time um, at Notre Dame Cathedral? Which no. what what mosque? The mosque. There, there, um, Dome and a Mount in Jerusalem, the uh, large mosque. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the prayer halls oh. caught fire at the same time that Notre Dame was on fire. And well, it turned, well, it could very well be God getting even with the organized religion. Well, it, it turns out it was a couple of kids who were playing in the prayer hall that started the fire, and, and it. It was contained very quickly, yeah. but it was one of those things that didn't make the news. Um, you know, and I thought it was interesting that both of the iconic structures. Yeah. Hey, listen. As you can hear, the theme is is playing right now. I thank everybody for joining us tonight. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. Charlie, yeah. uh, uh, Patrick. Uh, 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 oh boy, I am just so Charlie. Char Charlie, of course, uh, and, and and Josh and and uh, Rob and uh, um, oh God, Tony, Tony, uh, Tony, yeah. Oh boy, I'm just so out of it, I, you know. Uh, Tom and and Patrick, did I say everybody? I, anybody I miss? Yeah. Okay, if I didn't miss anybody then. That's you fine. forgot yourself. Hey, everybody, why don't you kind of give a big wave goodbye to the Get folks well out there now. in television <laughs> land, okay? Uh, yeah, there they are. There they are, folks. That's the citizen panel. you got to love them. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, let me let me hang up on them here. I don't even know how to hang up on them anymore. 
Uh, there we go. That takes care of it. Okay. And because I'm no longer using Skype, I'm in sync. Okay. It's fine. Uh, but anyway, uh, we lost the rest of them. Okay. Let me see here. I think it was just there was just too many people overloading this machine. And I can hardly wait till I get my other machine back. Uh, I may do a show tomorrow night. I may not do a show tomorrow night. It depends on whether I want to put up with this. Uh, who knows where that other echo is coming from and all that other bullshit. And I'm just tired of having to deal with this, okay? I just want to do a goddamn great show for you, okay? Anyway, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. And uh, tomorrow night, Damian Chaplin, 930 and maybe I'll be back tomorrow night and if they put up with Echo or put up with whatever, uh, with lag on me or whatever, and we'll put up with this lousy, shitty, crappy situation until uh, I get my machine back, uh, hopefully any day now. If Apple will only do something about it. Anyway, that said, I'm Alex Bennett. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.